Hi everyone, my name is Mike. I'm from the support team here at Clipfolio and today I'm going to walk you through creating a dynamic data source. Uh, that's a data source with a variable inside of it. It could be extremely useful to you if you're trying to connect to a data source that has multiple profiles. So for this example, we're using Google Analytics and for Google Analytics, we may have multiple web pages that we're trying to monitor and they each have different profile IDs that you can only pull a single profile ID per data source. In this case, we can add a variable to that data source so that we can pull multiple profiles in a single clip. So the first thing you wanna do is retrieve your profile IDs from Google. So you want your list of profile IDs and the easiest way to do that is opening up Google's Query Explorer and you'll see the URL here at the top. And we'll also share this link in the YouTube video comments. Um, once you sign on to Google's Query Explorer, you'll be asked to sign in to your account. Uh, here you'll see we're already signed in. Uh, but once you sign in, you'll have uh, your account here that you can select. And then you'll have the property. And the property is the web page that'll give you the profile ID. So you'll notice the ID here is what we want. And you'll notice as I change the property, the ID changes as well. So in this case, I'm just gonna first copy paste this one. And in this case, we're gonna use four of these different properties. So the first things first is create a data source with your list of profile IDs. In this case, it's just a simple Excel document where I have the profile IDs on the left and the labels, so what web pages they are on the right. Okay, so for this example, we used our YouTube channel, uh, the actual app itself, our support page, and the metrics hub. So once you have this example data source created, you're going to want to create the variable. So you're going to go into create a clip, then click on advanced tools once you're in the clip editor and create a new variable. Again, in this case, I already have a variable created, but we called this one profile ID. And you'll just see this little warning here that says I already created this. And then we'll use our variable that I copied as the default value. Now this value needs to be a valid value because this is going to make sure that when we first run the data source, that it actually runs successfully and finds data. So click on create variable. In this case, I'm just gonna click cancel since we've already created it. And then we're gonna go back into our data source creation. So click on back here. And then we're gonna create a new data source and this will be creating our dynamic data source. So select our Google Analytics connector in this example and then create a custom Google Analytics data source. It'll ask you to either sign in or if you have a token created already, just click on continue. For GA, we're gonna want to switch to advanced mode so that we see the actual query. Uh, we need to see the query because this is where we're actually going to insert our variable. This is just the default query that uh, we use here for Google Analytics, and it retrieves users, sessions, and page views, and it gives us our date dimension as well, and it pulls from the last 30 days. So we're actually gonna wanna change this, and we're gonna pull in the last 90 days of information, and then we're gonna add in our variable. So where it has the profile ID here, we're actually gonna just erase this and put curly bracket, props dot and then your var variable name in this case profile id and we're going to close that with another curly bracket and now we have our variable inserted into the data source one thing to note is that you you need to create a new data source when creating a dynamic data source this cannot be a duplicated data source or an existing static data source that you're going to edit this needs to be a fresh data source and once you have your variable added into the query, you can select get data. And you'll see it retrieves the data for our default profile ID. So just click on continue. 
and then save the data source. And we'll just rename this to dynamic so that we know how to differentiate. You can also share the data source here as well. In this case, we're not going to, but just click on save. Now that you have your dynamic data source and profile ID data source created, you're going to click on your dynamic data source and select create a clip. For this clip, we're going to use the bar line chart component. And we're going to click on the X axis and add in our dates for the X axis. Uh, we want to change the formatting of our dates because right now uh, it's not in a nice uh, visual format. Typically, it automatically picks up that it's a date and time, and it is right now automatically picking up the input format. So we just want to click on the display format and adjust this to something more readable. So we'll go with month, day, and year. And then we'll adjust the labels to auto. And this will just put them in a nicer format, a more visual, visually appealing format. And we'll drag this out a bit so that we can display more dates. Next, we're going to click on our series and add in our users. And we'll also rename this to users on the properties tab. We'll add a couple more series here. And we'll just name this one page views. And this one will be sessions. And we'll add in our data. And now we have a nice visual chart here of our users, sessions, and page views. Uh, next, we want to make this more dynamic. So we're going to drag in the user input control component. And we're going to add in our profile ID data source. So click on that to add in the second data source here. And click on the profile ID values in the value component. And then the labels here in the label component. And this will make it so that it shows the names rather than the actual profile IDs themselves so that you know what you're selecting. Uh, next, click on the user input control component and switch the use variable option to our profile ID variable. Uh, you can pick a default value here if you'd like. So we're gonna select the app. Uh, lastly, we want to create a filter on our X axis. So right click, select filter to exclude the header row of our data. So to do this, deselect everything, click on the blank value, which is our header row, and then exclude the data and click filter. And that's it. Click on save. Give your clip a name. You can share it out here if you'd like, or just click on save. Go ahead and create a new dashboard so you can test it out and add it. Now you'll see as we switch, it gets the different metrics for that specific profile. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for part two where we uh, combine all the data in the same clip. Have a good day.